Data analysts and data scientists are two roles in the field of data analytics that have distinct responsibilities and skill sets. A data analyst is responsible for collecting, cleaning, and organizing data, as well as performing basic statistical analysis to support business decision making. They use data visualization and presentation skills to communicate insights and findings to stakeholders. Data analysts are typically focused on descriptive data analysis. A data scientist, on the other hand, is a more advanced role that requires a broader set of skills, including statistical modeling, machine learning, and programming. Data scientists are responsible for building and implementing predictive models, designing and conducting experiments, and developing machine learning algorithms to support decision making. When discussing the difference between data analysts and data scientists, people mistakenly think that their roles are completely separate from one another. However, in my mind, a data scientist needs to be able to do everything a data analyst does. But the data scientist just needs to have additional skills that make them even more powerful. I understand this might not make sense right now, so let me use a metaphor to explain what I mean. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You might have seen it in a psychology class. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory in psychology proposed by Abraham Maslow in 1943. It outlines a five-level hierarchy of human needs, starting from the most basic physiological needs and moving up to the highest level of self-actualization needs. Self-actualization is at the top of the pyramid because this is where humans can reach their full potential. The key here is that individuals must fulfill their lower level needs before they can focus on their higher level needs. In other words, the lower level needs must be filled before any of the higher level ones can be filled. The needs on the pyramid include, first, your physiological needs. These are the most basic and fundamental needs, including food, water, shelter, and clothing. Once you have these fulfilled, you can move on to safety needs. These are the needs for security and stability, including protection from harm and financial security. Once you have these fulfilled, you can move on to love and belonging needs. These are the needs for social interaction, affection, and companionship. Once you have these fulfilled, you can move on to your esteem needs. These are the needs for self-esteem and recognition, including self-respect and respect of others. Once you have these fulfilled, you can move on to your self-actualization needs. These are the highest level of needs, including personal growth and the pursuit of one's full potential. By understanding the hierarchy of needs, society as a whole can better address the needs of individuals to create more fulfilling and productive environments. In many of the same ways, we can construct a data science hierarchy of needs. And by the way, this is courtesy of our friends over at Hackernoon, who put together this excellent visual. At the lowest level of the data science hierarchy of needs is the collection of data, which includes things like instrumentation, logging, sensors, and external data. Once you have collected the data, you can move on to moving the data and storing the data in a place where it is easily accessible. This includes building things like reliable data flow, infrastructure, pipelines, and the storage of structured and unstructured data. In a company, or any organization for that matter, these bottom two levels, which include the collection, movement, and storage of data, are typically left to the data engineers and the software engineers. This is because these steps typically require robust technical skills and typically happen at the same time as the construction of the actual product, which is typically a responsibility of engineering. The next level in the data science hierarchy of needs is exploring and transforming your data. This includes cleaning, anomaly detection, and the prep of your data. At the very base level, if you do not have clean data that is error-free and usable, it has no value to you. The exploration and transformation of your data is an important step because it allows you to quickly understand the quirks and flaws and characteristics of your data and informs you on how to transform it to be useful. Once you're able to reliably explore and clean your data, you can move on to the next level where you can start aggregating and labeling your data. Aggregating and labeling your data is where you begin to spot trends or features of your data that will help you make business decisions. Here, you would want to create segmentations to understand if any trends or metrics in the data jump out. These simple actions can help you glean powerful insights. These two steps in the hierarchy, 
aggregating and labeling, and exploring and transforming are typically the role of a data analyst. In these two steps alone, a data analyst is taking data, making sense of it, and using basic actions like aggregation to spot trends. Although it seems basic, these steps are crucial for making business decisions. These steps are really important for laying the groundwork for the next level of the hierarchy, typically where data scientists live. The next stage would be the learn and optimize stage, which involves learning from your data and optimizing it by using things like A-B testing, experimentation, and simple machine learning algorithms. I would also throw in other simple predictive models like regression analysis here as well. In this stage, we are trying to establish causality between our variables and to create basic predictive models to test and understand what inputs we ultimately want to put into our machine learning models. You will notice in our graphic that there is some overlap between the data analyst and this level in the hierarchy as well. Some of the more advanced data analysts will perform steps in the learning and optimization level or be involved in the teams that execute on this level. However, the learn optimize stage is typically a pretty small part of a data analyst's role. Finally, once all of this work is done, we can move to the very top of the pyramid where we can finally begin building robust, artificial intelligence, and machine learning models based on the established relationships that have been found in our data. When people talk about data science, they're typically referring to these top two levels. These are the glorified parts of data science, designing experiments and creating algorithms to solve complex problems. However, in reality, a data scientist does everything that a data analyst does, but their responsibilities are typically more advanced and extend to the top of the pyramid. Why? Because artificial intelligence and machine learning models cannot be done without first doing everything below. Without the foundational work in the pyramid, the highest level of work cannot be done, just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is why, in reality, data scientists have to work through all four of the top levels. As a rough estimate, a data analyst would spend 95% of their time in the explore, transform, and aggregate label levels of the hierarchy, slicing and dicing and aggregating data in a way that is useful for decision-making in the company. The work of data scientists and data analysts are not separate. They build on each other. And without the crucial work of data analysts, data scientists would not be able to do their work.